Welcome to the 10-Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And one of the biggest challenges when working with QuickBooks is how to handle donor-restricted funds. So somebody gives a donation for a specific project or a specific event, and you need to track that amount. And you need to make sure that you're only using that money for that specific purpose. So I'm gonna tell you why I always track these types of funds in the equity section instead of in expenses or revenue or underneath the checking or anything like that. Those are the other alternatives, but I track it in the equity section and I think that's the best way. So let me go ahead and show you. All right, so here I am. I'm in the QuickBooks Online desktop app. And by the way, I'm really getting to enjoy this. I did a video on this not that long ago and I, at least for working for with multiple tabs or windows, as you can see, I have up here, here just uh, five tabs already open. It's a lot easier to work with. Um, yeah, I think it's it's just easier to work with. I'm starting to phase myself away from using the web browser, although that's a habit because a lot of times you're in your online banking and then you just open up your um, QuickBooks right in your browser. But this is getting to be the superior way to actually work in QuickBooks online is to use the desktop app. So what I understand is there's probably three main ways to track donor restricted funds in QuickBooks. So the first way, the most common way I think is to actually split apart your checking account to add sub accounts. So if you wanted to split this out, what I commonly see is there'll be one for the general fund, then like trustees and missions and funeral fund or whatever there is, you know, there'll be all these different breakdowns underneath this, uh, this main checking. And it's really a way of just splitting up your checking to try to, try to reflect those funds. Um, it is a little bit misleading though, because your general fund might also include other things. So if you have a savings account, it might include money in your savings account. It would also be offset by any liabilities you have. So like payroll withholdings or something like that. So, um, so it's not a perfect way to do it, but it is a way of doing it. And it would show you then the balance right away, pretty clean and easy. The other way I tend to see the churches go ahead and track their, their uh, d donor restricted funds is in the other revenue and other expenditures funds. So if you have the re regular revenue and expenditures, they all show up in this operating section. So then you get the net operating revenue. And if I had, other set up, you would see my other revenue and other expenditures underneath here. And part of the reason I really don't like that is you're still having to do some math. I mean, you get you get the activity so you can see how much was given to the missions fund and you can see how much was spent out of the missions fund. Uh, but there there's some distance between them. So it's hard to tell the balance or the change in for the fund. And yeah, how do you see the balance? So then some churches, what they'll have to do is then they'll every month, they'll close those um, or they'll do like a journal entry to record the balance in the equity section. And so what I decided to do is just skip that whole awkward step and just record everything in the equity section. So here you can see I have donor restricted funds. And then I have all these various funds that people give to. And I can see the balances so easily right here uh, underneath each one. So how much, if somebody asked me, how much is in the disaster response flooding fund? Oh, it's 4150. How much is in the general disaster response fund? Oh, it's 205. How much is there available for new churches? 9,300. So that's, that's one of the main questions people ask when they're working with donor restricted funds. And whether I have to go to the chart of accounts, which I don't have to, I would just normally just pull up my statement of financial position. And you would see all my donor restricted funds here. And you could actually see there's a sub a subtotal here. So you could see that I have about $31,000 in my donor restricted funds. And the nice thing is, I could also tell how much is in my general fund. And it's the legitimate amount. I don't have to do any fancy math. It's my beginning balance general fund and my net revenue. And that's assuming that you have all your equity section cleaned up. So you don't have that opening beginning balance one. Um, if you have any fixed assets, you have those accounted for separately. So, but I could tell exactly what my, my general fund is by just adding these two. Because in my activities, 
I don't have all that that uh, that would be on the bottom, which would be throwing it off that other revenue and other expenditures. So anyway, that's why I like doing that. So what does that look like when you receive money for a special fund it's for a donor restricted fund? So I'm going to go ahead and choose my main checking account. So also, this is one of the problems with if you do it in the checking section is I sometimes forget to change this account. So if you have all these different funds to choose from, you always got to remember to deposit it in the right one. And even if you have like one deposit, so let's just say you have one deposit that's going into five different funds, which is a typical Sunday offering usually. I have to do five different deposits. Here I could do just one because I could say if I got money for, let's just say my regular money, this would be my offering. And then I could have maybe somebody gave for new churches. I can do that. And then I could just keep going on and somebody gave for the tornadoes. And I, this would be three different bank deposits if I tried to do it that, that other way. So instead it's just one, one de deposit and it's gonna increase the balance of those equity accounts when I do it. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this though. And then when I do an expense, so whether I do an ex a bill or a check, I'm gonna do a check or just an expenditure if it was electronic. I would pick who I paid, I'll pay myself. And so here would be one of the, again, the challenges, remembering which bank account it's gonna be out of. But what happens if it's coming out of multiple funds? So let's say the trustees and the um, missions committee are, are working together to buy something. All of a sudden you have to have, you might have a check coming out of the trustees, but then you also have to record a transfer from the missions to the trustees to reimburse them. So if I wanted to do that here, I would go ahead and have my main checking account. I would choose my, so here I'll do new churches and I'll do tornado. There we go. And I put in my amount if they were splitting. So again, this would be uh, at least two different transactions. And then you also have the risk of, of, of using the wrong bank account if you're tracking through your bank account. So this, again, makes it pretty easy, pretty simple. And then what does it look like in, the, in your reports? I'm gonna cancel this one too. So you could see that you normally just see the balance. So what if you wanna see the activity though? And in this uh, Greenfield tornado response one, I know I have some activity. So we had a big tornado here and they've been doing a wonderful job. The churches have been giving to it. And I could see then money going in. So you can see all these different deposits. And if I wanted to, I could drill in to see it more. And then I could see it going out and I could see who we paid, Convoy of Hope. Uh, we paid and then Convoy of Hope again. And then we kept receiving more money. So I kept paying out more money to Convoy of Hope. So um, you can see exactly the activity that you need. So this would be a report that I could go ahead and I can give to somebody if I, they wanted. All right, hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, I really do like this, this solution for donor restricted funds. I just had a meeting with the church, a Global Methodist Church in the Heartland Conference. And it was really interesting because I shared with him this this concept and then he started pointing out these things that I I really didn't appreciate before but there's always a challenge with always using the right checking account and even if you have to split transactions like I talked about um, those are a real pain and end up taking extra time and extra detailed attention so why why make it more difficult than it needs to be would really all you want to see is the balance of those donor restricted funds all right that's all i have i'm going to put a couple links in the description until next time god bless you